Welcome back. It is Sunday, December 4th in the NBA. My three favorite picks are on the way. Let's recap yesterday. What was our third straight winning day? A two and one day overall. D'Angelo Russell under eight and a half assists. I believe he ends with six. He does get ejected at the end with two technical fouls. Great work. Kings money line. Didn't really have to worry about it. The line just moved a little bit as Paul George and Kawhi Leonard were out. Didn't matter. They won by like 30 points against the Clippers. And then Julius Randle, our only loss of the day. He had eight rebounds plus assists going into the fourth. He obviously does not play a minute in the fourth quarter as the Knicks get blown out by 30. Either way, we're going for our fourth straight winning day. If you're new to the call on our shot channel, hopefully we've been helping you make some money. Go down below, hit that subscribe button, drop a like too. We just passed 57,000 subscribers. Let's close in on 58 and it is Sunday. Let's enter the week making some more money, but we have two NFL videos live for Sunday. We have our favorite spread picks. You can go check out that video. We also have our parlays and player props video that you guys love. It was posted last night. Go check it out. I talked about four player props and a money line parlay, which we've hit the money line parlay in two out of the last three weeks. Let's make that three or four. Both videos will be linked in the description and at the end of the video and in the pinned comment section down below. If we helped you make some money, go hit that subscribe button as always. And also, if you want to become a COS All-Star, do that too. It's our YouTube membership. You get a couple cool perks. It's only $2.99 a month, but you get our plays early, not only for the NBA, but also for the NFL and for college football, which we had a great day in college football, five and one yesterday. But also you get some custom emojis to get your name shouted out at the end of the video and you get to support the channel, which we certainly appreciate. Now let's talk. All you have to do is go down below, hit the join button too. Let's talk about the NBA though. We have eight games on. It's a Sunday and I swear Sundays are wonky so be careful I'm only putting three plays out here and I kind of like all of them and as a reminder the best bet segment takes the weekends off let's start with this first one though Mr. Kyle Kuzma of the Washington Wizards taking his over 20 and a half points minus 113 on FanDuel now before I dive into why I like Kuzma I need to ask you guys for a favor go down below or go on to Twitter and follow us at call on our shot. We are, I think are like less than 200 followers away from 50K. Hopefully we can hit that today. But either way, let's talk about why I like Kuzma. And Kuzma, he only has a line right now as FanDuel, points bet, Barstool, and Betway. Maybe by the time you're watching this, he has a line on all books. But either way, I like it at 20 and a half. He could go up to 21 and a half, and I think he can hit that too. If it goes to 19 and a half, take that. Now let's talk about Kuzma. And he's taking on his former team, the Los Angeles Lakers, who are in Washington, D.C., taking on the Wizards. And I love Kuzma to bounce back here, especially in a great matchup against the Lakers. Look, this is, he's got a little bit of revenge on his mind for a team that traded him away. Now, Kuzma is in a very similar spot to, I think, two nights ago when we took Klay Thompson's over. Klay Thompson went out, had a bad game one game, but he had hit the over in six straight games. That's what, And then he crushed it in the next game. That's exactly what Kuzma is because he scored 14 points last game on only 14 field goal attempts. Prior to that game, like I said, hit this over in six straight games. And over these last seven, he's averaged 24.6 points per game on 21 field goal attempts. So he's shooting a lot and he's scoring a lot. I mean, that's kind of like that normally goes hand in hand. And I like how he's playing and I like him to bounce back because, you know, the 14 points, 14 field goal attempts, pretty low and well below his normal averages. And this Wizards offense, be honest, it's pretty simple. I mean, without DeLon Wright, without Rui Hachimura off the bench, it's basically Brad the Beal, Kyle Kuzma, and Chris Stapps for Zingas. Now, Chris Stapps going to have his hands full as, as he probably has to guard Anthony Davis, who is probable for this game. And you could say Kuzma is going to have to guard, have his hands full with LeBron, but I don't know if LeBron plays. He is iffy for this game. And I'm not, I don't think Kuzma is just going to travel and follow LeBron nonstop. They like to put Denny of Dia on those kind of guys. And whether LeBron plays or not, I think Kuzma is going to come out here and play pretty well. And Chris Stapps could get into foul trouble against Anthony Davis. And Anthony Davis is going to guard him on the other side of the court. Kuzma has only played the Lakers once in his career. It was last year, I believe in March. He went out and scored 20. 23 points in 32 minutes. Now, 32 minutes, probably his floor at this rate, as long as he avoids foul trouble, he could go out there and play 38, 40 minutes in this game. Wouldn't surprise me. In that game, he went nine for 18 from the field. Went three for nine from the free throw line. Kuzma's a much better free throw shooter than that. He was in LA in that one. He's back at home where he's hit this over in three straight home games. I like Kuzma to have a pretty good game against his former squad. Give me Kyle Kuzma, over 20 and a half points. He should be able to shoot a bunch in this game. Should be a high scoring game. Give me Kuzma's over. Now let's keep it moving to my game pick of the day. We've been pretty dialed in on these five and one over the last six. We're going with the money line pick again, and it's going to be another underdog, but this one, a pretty big underdog, is I'm taking the Pacers on the money line, putting a unit on them, plus 140 on DraftKings. Now, if you want to be conservative, take the plus three and a half. Now, at the moment of recording this, it is plus three and a half. Now, there is a chance Damian Lillard is back today, and maybe that moves the line a little bit more, and if it gets up to like plus four and a half, plus five and a half, I'd obviously prefer that than the money line, but at the current moment, the plus three and a half makes not a lot of sense to take. I'd rather just take the money line for plus 140, as I don't really see the Pacers having a lot of games where they lose by three, two, or one. I'd rather just take their money line for the better value. They've, in fact, only lost one game this season by three or less points. They've either won or lost by at least four or more. Let's talk about the Pacers, though. If you're looking for a team to bounce back, 
they're it because they've lost two straight games by 23 to the Kings and 20 to the Utah Jazz. Look at the Blazers on the other hand. They just beat the Utah Jazz last night by five points. So it seems pretty clear. You take the Blazers, right? They might get Damian Lillard back too. I don't think not so fast. I'd rather take the Pacers here in a bounce back spot. The Blazers, even if they don't if they don't get Lillard back, they've only won they've lost seven of twelve games without Lillard, including they haven't won back to back games without him. So they just won last night. So if Lillard's inactive, I don't see them win him too straight. And also if Lillard plays, the Blazers have won or have won only one of the last four games with Lillard. He's missed six or seven games in a row. So he's gonna come back in a little bit rusty, and he's also wasn't even shooting the ball pretty well prior to that game. So just look at this Pacers team. I think they're doing a bounce back. They're very, very good after a loss. In fact, six and three against the spread after a loss. While we aren't necessarily betting on them against the spread, plus three and a half is pretty close to just asking them to win outright. They are also six and three straight up after a loss as well. Pacers four and zero against the spread with the rest advantage. Obviously, they have the rest advantage against this Blazers team. And like I said, we aren't betting against the spread for the Pacers, but in fact, we basically are with the with the money line instead of plus three and a half. You also look at a Blazers team. Regardless of if Lillard is back or not, they've been playing their bench guys a lot of minutes. And back-to-backs, I think, are going to affect those bench guys more. I think they got guys like Justice Winslow, Trendon Watford. Those guys don't play a lot of minutes, but they've been playing 35, 40 minutes a night. A back-to-back might affect those guys a little bit more. And also, it's like I said, the back-to-back games do affect players. And they have to travel back home. And Anthony Simons went berserk last game, scoring like 45 points. If there's anything I know about Anthony Simons, he struggles to have back-to-back good games. It's just his, that's his calling card. He's very inconsistent, and I think he has a bad game today. I just don't know if Lillard is the saving grace for him in this one. I like the Pacers in a great bounce-back spot after losing two straight games by 20-plus points. Tyrus Halliburton, go get it done. We have faith in you guys for taking the Pacers on the money line. Plus 140, just put a unit on it. Now, my final play of the day, it's, it's, it's going to coincide with one of my favorite shirts that I have in my collection. Mr. Nikola Jokic, the Joker. We're taking this over 43 and a half PRAs, points plus rebounds plus assists, minus 115 on DraftKings. Now, if you have to look at an individual line, points is the way to go. But like I said, there's a lot of guys, some guys would rather just take points because that's all they're going to do. Jokic, we know. He could go out there and get 20 rebounds in a game and make this pretty easy to hit. And Jokic could also get 20 assists. That's what Jokic does. And I don't normally like to take these high PRA lines because a lot does have to go right for them to, you know, hit this. But I think Mr. Uh, Mr. Jokic can get it done. And you look at this uh, Nuggets team, they're going to be down Michael Porter Jr. again. And so they're going to need some more offensive guys to step up. Aaron Gordon could get into foul trouble. He sees likely the guy that guards a guy like Zion Williamson. It's just going to be the Jokic guarding Jonas Valanciunas, which I do like that. More on that in a second. But over the last five games all without Michael Porter Jr. Jokic just had to step up and he scored the ball pretty well. In those games, he's averaged 26.2 points per game, 10.8 rebounds per game, which is actually pretty low for him, and 8.6 assists per game. So 45.6 PRAs per game in the last five without a guy, Michael Porter Jr. In those games, we've seen him have 58, 38, 52, 38, and 42 PRA. So he has gone under in two straight games. I don't think he makes that three straight. Like I said, he always seems to turn it up an extra notch against Jonas Valanciunas. Now, Valanciunas, not a guy that really moves his feet all too well. So Jokic, I'm not saying he's the most athletic guy in the world, but he's very crafty. And I think he can get Jonas Valanciunas easily into foul trouble in this game. And I don't know if Jokic doesn't like uh, Valanciunas or he just wants to prove he's the best foreign NBA player. But either way, I don't care how he does it. He's always turned it up an extra notch against Jonas. And in his last 10 games versus Valanciunas, Jokic averaged 27.9 points per game, 12 rebounds per game, and 8.9 assists per game for 48.8 PRAs per game. Jokic in those 10 games, look at these numbers, 69 PRAs, nice, 46, 61, 44, 50. Those are just the last five games against him. And then if you go back even further, 43, 51, a bad game with 22 and he only played like 26 minutes, 49 and 53 PRAs, cashing this over in 10 or eight of those 10 games. Now you look at the Pelican stats versus centers. You might say, oh, they're actually pretty good against centers. They don't give up a ton of rebounds and points. They haven't faced a lot of elite centers. You'd go on the stat muse and you just type in centers game log with 25 plus minutes against, or even 30 plus minutes against the Pelicans. You won't find a lot of guys. In fact, they've really only in just the month of November, really only faced a couple couple guys that played a lot of minutes. You saw Clint Cabela have 21 points and 19 rebounds, 41 PRAs versus them earlier this month. Miles Turner had a game with 37 points and 11 rebounds, 50 PRAs. And then you had Anthony Davis who had 40 PRAs versus them as well, only scoring 20 points, but having 16 rebounds, four assists. So all of those guys combined for a total of six assists. We know Jokic averages nearly nine assists per game, 16 potential assists. I think he has a pretty good game. I think this is close. It's a pick em. I think minus one, minus one is the Nuggets as favorites, but it's minus 110 on the money line both ways over under 228 and a half 
I like the Joker to step up on Sunday. I think he has a pretty good game. I like his points over the most. I think he could score 30 points tonight. But in the case that he scores like 20 and then pitches in, you know, 15 rebounds and 10 assists, I'd rather have a little bit of safety taking the PRA. So I'll take Jokic of the Nuggets, 0 for 43 and a half PRA. So those are my three favorite plays. No added plays. Let's go for our fourth straight winning day. As always, we appreciate all, new, all of our new All-Stars and all of our existing All-Stars. We have a couple of rejoins today, and I'll always shout you guys out for a rejoin. Here they are. We got Kashav. We got Steven. We got Jess Brett. We got Curtis, John, Gene, Randy, Brandon, Harsha, Cameron, and Richard. Like I said, if you want to become an All-Star, go down below. Hit the join button on the channel, only $2.99 a month, and you get some cool extra perks like all of our plays early before the videos drop in case the lines are going to move a little bit. So I appreciate you guys. Just a couple four, a couple reminders, our parlays and player props video. Boom, right here on the channel. Go check it out. You can go check that four player props on Moneyline Parlay for Sunday in the NFL. Our favorite spread picks is right below it. Go check out that for the NFL. We've been doing pretty good on spread picks this season. Follow us on Twitter. Help us hit 50,000 followers. It's just at Call on Our Shot. You can go find us there. And if you want some Call on Our Shot merch, that's somewhere over there. You can go check that out as well. This is Austin. I'll catch you guys back on Monday. Let's go 3 0, or at least bare minimum 2 1. Go, go Pacers, go Jokic, go Kuzma. Let's have a day. See you guys back in the next one. Peace out.